You're watching Flight TV, the second release of a new public show made for people who are really into flying. Our first release aroused high interest among our regular spectators. We are pleased and thank you guys for being with us again. The sponsor of our show is the Aerovolga Company, which continues the mass production of the La 8 amphibious flying boats and the development of the two-seater Boye airplane. Alexander Shvitkin is in the studio with you again. Hi, everybody. The International Aeronautics Federation, FAI, announced the World Air Games. The Kudinova Airfield held its open house day in the Kaluga region. The Russian Federation of Aeronautics held its flight safety seminar. The Crimean Spring Aviation Show took place in the Crimean Peninsula. The initial stock, six Antonov AN-2 units are put on sale in Petrozavodsk for just $5,000 per unit. Antonov AN-2 workhorses, Techno Region Industrial Engineering Company ventures to upgrade the AN-2. Aviation News. The FAI published a list of 11 kinds of sports and 24 subjects chosen for the World Air Games to be held in Dubai from the 1st to the 12th of December of this year. The competition in the Arab Emirates will gather more than 1,000 sportsmen. This will be the fourth and the largest World Aviation Games. The previous games were held in Turkey in 1997, in Spain in 2001, and in Italy in 2009. The FAI World Air Games is a combination of masters events and astonishing shows of air sports, gliders and motor gliders aerobatics, radio controlled model aircraft, amateur built and experimental airplanes, air balloons, auto gyros, hang gliders, helicopters, various ultralight aircraft, motorized para wings, and skydiving. The Russian Federation of Aeronautical Sports held its annual Air Static Flight Safety Seminar in Moscow. The big assembly hall accommodated pilots, design engineers, and experts from all Russia. The reports made by the Russian AOPA's branch president, Vladimir Turin, and Svetlana Mikhailova, the deputy director of the Central Pilots Medical Inspection, were the most interesting for Russian aviators. But the real star of the party was the impressive story of the Trans-Pacific flight made by Leonid Tukchaev in his gas balloon. French aviation engineer Edwin van Rumbeck has developed a bionic robot, a bird controlled with a smartphone app. The gadget is light and robust. Control procedures are intuitive. Edwin says that live birds are not scared of his robot. They rather tend to get in touch with it because it flies and flaps its wings just as normal birds do. This is not the first attempt to construct a drone bird, but certainly the first success. All previous projects failed due to prohibitive weight of the structure. Edwin solved this problem by installing a super light 800 MA battery and a very light electric motor. The length of the bird is 6.7 inches. The wingspan is 13 inches. This is just like a real swallow, but it's half the weight, just nine grams. The bionic bird's body accommodates the motor, the battery, and two microchips. The mechanism is constructed on the biomimicry principle and sustains eight minutes of flight to a range of 330 feet with the speed of 0.01 knots. Its fancy charger looks like an egg and is able to fully charge the battery in 12 minutes. The sale price of the toy is about $140. B-91 Aviation Gas for Lycoming Engines, the long proven quality. Airvin Company, the official distributor of the Water Aviation Group, the manufacturer of B-91 Aviation Gasoline. Thousands of our spectators have ridden in the Antonov AN-2 airplane. For hundreds of those who were trained in Soviet pilot schools, the AN-2 was their school desk. All the best features of the Antonov are long known. Also long known is the fact that this beautiful airplane became conceptually and technically obsolete a long time ago. All multiple attempts to upgrade it were aborted by either lack of financing or the high cost of the solution. But it seems now that a simple and cost-effective solution has finally been found. Yevgeny Maximov has more about that. The founders of the Prom Techno Region Company have been involved in aerial crop spraying for more than 20 years. Their fleet of about 30 Antonov AN-2s 
have been flying all over Russia from the south to the far east. In order to reduce their operation costs, the guys established their own maintenance and repair base in the airport of Yezk and certified it for reconditioning repair and all types of maintenance of the AN-2. But they are going to go on further ahead. The AN-2 is a really ravenous airplane. 53 gallons an hour is a huge consumption for a 2600 pound payload airplane. We have calculated that within 10,000 flight hours this plane burns more than 2,000 tons of aviation gasoline. The formula is simple. The lower the aircraft weight, the less fuel it burns. If you apply this to an AN-2, you can save millions of rubles on fuel. Then, once having its own MR center organized, the Techno region decided to upgrade the AN-2 by reducing its structural weight. First of all, they inspected the internal structure components. We just disassembled and weighed the body. We were surprised by some stuff. We threw away all the electronics. Look, there were 550 pounds of old cables. There are just two small electric motors in the tail, the two elevator trims, nothing else. And a lot of thick cables, solderings, and controllers made in 1947. What for? Who knows? The controller transforms 28 volts into 400 hertz and weighs 18 pounds. We put three microchips, two thin cables, and one button instead. So the guys exchanged 550 pounds of old equipment for 45 pounds of modern equipment. But Sergei did not stop there. The biplane wing conceived by Antonov many years ago in order to make a longer service life was in fact overstrengthened, and above that resulted in higher fuel consumption. This was not a problem for Soviet times, but now dozens of tons of aviation gasoline saved is a big deal. Then they decided to remove the lower wing and to convert the AN-2 into a classical strut high wing airplane. We chose a 1.57 inch stainless steel tube for the strut. The normal operational wing load is 15 tons. One tube withstands 10 tons, so four struts will sustain three times the load. We have shown all the strength calculations to inspectors, and they approved the structure, and they issued the airworthiness certificate to our airplane. This AN-2, once being converted into a individual aircraft unit and named the TR-301, got rid of another AN-2 problem. It does not have to be overhauled every three and a half years, regardless of whether it flew or whether it was stored in a hangar. Another advantage is that the TR-301 no longer depends on the now Ukrainian Antonov Design Bureau, which means there is no more need to wait for ages until Antonov issues permission for continuing the aircraft's operation. I believe today is the only cheap and simple way to resume operating the entire existing AN-2 fleet. We have spoken already with some buyers and shown them the airplane and they liked it. It looks like this year we will start commercial operation. The operator's arguments are logical and clear. Now let's listen to what pilots think. In fact, experienced pilots approved for AN-2 operation did not find any substantial difference in the new airplane's flight performance. When developing this airplane, we have tested it and found no difference between it and the normal AN-2. The only difference is that the speed is 8 knots higher. Then the takeoff run got 100 feet longer. In maneuvering, it became more effective in flight due to less weight, and it turns faster. Another fundamental difference of the TR-301 is the reduction of the pilot crew from two to only one man. The airplane has autopilot. The flight manual specifies that there is no difference in piloting between the AN-2 and the TR-301. The free right pilot seat can be used for an observer or a flight manager. Pilots experience on an AN-2 can easily fly the TR-301, with neither retraining nor certification needed. The only thing is to overcome a certain psychological gap, nothing else. The AN-2 into TR-301 upgrading takes just one month. The cost will depend on the scope of the work. It is up to the client to decide whether to remove the lower wing and replace the electronics or make just one of those two changes, or to leave out the right pilot seat or to remove it and add an autopilot, to do the work in Yezk or at the client's home base. There's always a chance to bargain. Evgeny Maximov, Anton Chekrygin, Flight TV. If you are interested in converting an AN-2 into the TR-301, but you don't have one, you can buy a batch of them in Petrozavodsk for just $6,000 per unit. In the Crimean Peninsula, the Russian Federation of Aviation Lovers, together with the local DOSAF branch, have organized a joint event with a plane of a simple name, Crimea's Spring. 
The Government Inventory Fund of the Republic of Karelia has announced a public auction sale of the aircraft belonging to the Northwestern Forest Guards Air Base. Several AN-2T and MI-8P were put on sale. In the past, these aircraft were used for monitoring the Karelia's deep forest and for sanitary flights. This is the government's second attempt to get rid of the aircraft, which have flown more than 19,000 hours each. The first one failed. No buyers were found, even for $5,500 per unit. The regional division of the Russian Federation of Aviation Lovers, together with the DOSAF of Crimea, held an aviation event dedicated to the first anniversary of the Crimea Spring. Despite the hostile weather, the show gathered more than 5,000 guests. Planes and helicopters were on display. The Russian emergency ministry material, sport bikes, and autos were also in the show. Guests were catered with the porridge cooked in a military field kitchen and hot tea. Fifteen of the local model aircraft builders clashed in an astonishing dogfight in the Crimea skies. A hot air balloon lifted dozens of spectators to see the beautiful view. Corvette, the most popular, proven, and reliable amphibian flying boat in Russia. Certified structure, extreme simplicity of mastering and flying, super short takeoff and landing distances, just 230 feet, negligible cost of spare parts and maintenance, less than $30 per flight hour, very attractive purchase price, just $80,000 for a brand new airplane. Budinovo Airfield hosted its traditional open house day in the beginning of March this year. Valery Chusov made his trip to the Kaluga region in chase of news and interesting events. In the beginning of March, residents of the suburbs of Moscow and the Moscow region witnessed how dozens of Robinson helicopters were training a formation flight performance. They were the Istra Air Club members preparing for the new season opening at Kudinova Airfield, a famous private airfield at the north of the Kaluga region. This is their third season opening, celebrated with an open house fly-in. The skies above Kudinova were crowded with a couple of local airplanes, including one hang glider and one of the famous Australian Jabiru J450s. The guys were flying several hours while food was being cooked for them and for the guests personally by Dmitry Shapovalov, who celebrated his birthday that day. All our guys have flown in. It's an open house day today. This is a good tradition now, already the third time. The flight season opening. No schedule, just gathering. Everyone missed each other during the long winter holidays. Friends just fly in, we talk, we argue, we make plans for the summer. The new summer season starts here. People meet here just to socialize. Our site is all open for that. Last year the airfield got renovated, the apron was paved, and it got more attractive for pilots. Just 90 miles away from Moscow is a good ride by automobile. Some air This is a good gathering held by the owners of every year. We've got our base here. I also happen to live here. That is why my air base is here too. Just a year ago I moved here, already one year working. I like it here so much. The airfield is improving. It's now clear for night flights. And we're assembling a Yak-52 now. I hope we'll be able to do some acrobatics this year. In fact, 90 miles is not a short trip. But not for pilots. Most of them get to Kudinovo by air. It is situated not far from several southern Moscow airfields. For example, Alexander Kochetov arrived from Grislovo airfield just 60 miles away, flying an RV-9A, an exquisite airplane built by Alexander himself. I spent two years choosing an airplane for me and I finally opted for this one. I was seeking something reasonable and well-flying. The RV is very popular in the US, so I ordered the kit and I spent four years building the airplane. I really enjoy it now. I've been flying this plane for two years, not for economic reasons. I could earn more for these four years. One sees my plane and doesn't believe that I built it in my backyard. This airplane was made to be home built, for those who are really into home airplane building and who are really in love with perfect airplanes. The weather was not too easy this year and some pilots ended up sitting at home. But those who came got a real joy and Kudinova is eager to make it again next year. We've got a tight schedule for this year. Last year we paved the apron for 15 new parking pads. We have six hangars now. Now we plan to make more hangars and more taxiways. We wish Kudinova Airfield and its pilots their dreams to come true and the skies to be clear above them. Valery Chusov, Alexander Moiseev, Flight TV. The Aero Volga company is the builder of the industrial La 8 amphibious flying boat and goes on with its activities. 
The first buyer of Aero Volga's new two-seat amphibian Boré airplane will get it by next fall for only $85,500. One who buys a La 8 will get a Boré as a bonus. There's always a place for a second aircraft, isn't there? If you enjoyed this release, put your likes on Facebook and subscribe to our show on YouTube. We are eagerly waiting for your comments on the contents of our show and your suggestions on the following issues. Flight TV is the people's show, and everyone is most welcome with your proposals and invitations. We are all used to acrobatic shows performed by airplanes. Helicopter acrobatics are not so common. Some of Westland Link's aerobatics will be in today's no comment section. Always with you, Alexander Schwedkin. See you again.